Hey, what's up guys? A lot of people lately have been asking me what kind of strings I use, what guitars I use, what amp settings I use, and all sorts of stuff. So I thought instead of answering everybody individually, I thought I would just make a video and share what I'm doing. Uh, we'll start with strings. So what gauge strings do I use? That depends on what tuning I'm in. So if I'm in standard tuning on seven strings, I like to use these guys. And it's actually, it's Ernie Ball, seven string pack, nothing super crazy, it's 56 to 10. And that has enough tension for a standard tuning. And uh, yeah, I mean, these are like six bucks. Go to Sweetwater.com, six bucks. Same with these for uh, six strings, for anywhere from drop C sharp, I use these guys, 46, 10. It's good for drop C sharp, it's good for standard tuning as well, for a half step down. Um, you're gonna have good tension here, and it's it's got a really bright tone to it. Um, Ernie balls are good for recording because they're affordable and they last long, and they like last through the song pretty well if you want absolutely crisp tone. So yeah, these two guys. Another trick I do if I need a little more tension if I'm tuning lower on seven strings, I buy the eight string Slinky Pack. It's eight strings, but you can either get rid of the 64 or get rid of the 74 and just use it as a seven string pack. It's actually cheaper than buying individual individual strings from like Diodario, a GHS. So yeah, I use this sometimes for uh, like drop A flat or if I go to drop F, it still works for drop F. It's gonna be a little loose. So this is a, as good as it pretty much gets. You could possibly go to 66, 67, but it really depends on what your tuners can handle. So that's what I use. And another thing I wanted to show you, I don't have the string pack with me, but I have it on my phone. This is what I've been using for like really big tone. GHS Boomers, seven string guitar, 74 13s. So yeah, they're pretty freaking big, but they sound awesome. That 74, you don't get any, uh, it, the, the F doesn't go sharp when you strum it really hard. It pretty much stays right there. And uh, yeah really big beefy tone if that's what you're into that's what i'm into i use this for my body through construction legator i can show you this is typically what i track with for drop f songs because it's so it's got such a good tone to it and uh it's also got the coil tap and everything but it handles <clears throat> a 74 really nicely what else oh what i use for my amp so for my amp settings I can show you, uh, these are my guitar tracks right here, highlighted. I use two tracks per guitar. I can show you muted, or uh, solo, sorry. So that's just one guitar. You can do 100% left if you want. Sometimes I do that, depends on the mix, but typically I like to do 85% on one track and then 100% on the other. So kind of <clears throat> picture like two cabs, two speaker cabinets. And when you pan 100%, that's like your bottom cab. And when you pan another one 85% to 75%, that's like your top cab. So you have a full stack of sound coming at you. So I kind of like to visualize that as I'm listening and mixing back music. So I'll show you with the both, I'll pan this one out to 85 as well and I'll show you what they both sound like I know it's just like a chuggy pattern but it'll get you kind of an idea of what it is alright and that's drop F that's actually using that black guitar with the with the 74 on it as you can see it's a pretty beefy tone so let me show you that whole thing in the mix together. So it's a pretty big sound. Moving on to the drums, and then I'll talk more about guitars. So I use Superior Drummer, uh, Superior Drummer 2.0. I use the Metal Foundry version of it. I know stock, it comes with the Avatar kit. Which sounds pretty good, but I just like the Metal Foundry. It has better sounding drums and stuff. And I use X drum and I blend snares. So I actually have two different snares, two different kicks that I'm putting together on here. 
So, yeah, that is it. I have my drum preset available on my Buried Alive Bandcamp page, along with a tone pack I made for Soul Sucker uh, for this album. Grab it if you have not yet. Speaking of tone pack, it's with uh, the Line 6 Pod HD 500X. And it's kind of like the HD 500, except it has a little bit more memory to it. Honestly, that's the only difference. It was only 500 bucks brand new. I've had it for two years, two and a half years. It's been through tour, like it's been through like all sorts of weather, all sorts of shitty stages and good stages, and it still works like a charm. So definitely, if you're thinking about getting an Axe FX, don't buy it. Buy an HD 500X. You will be happy that you saved 1500 bucks. You can buy a super sick guitar, or buy an interface, or you can spend the money in a better place. So, highly recommend this. Uh, my tone packs are super simple. You just download, I send you them after you buy them, and then you can just load them into the Pod HD Edit that you use on your computer. So, super easy. It's like, it's not really the, it's like, they call it the poor man's axe effects, but it's honestly, it sounds great, and it's easier to use, so you might as well simplify it and spend more time having fun with it than trying to figure out how to use a goddamn thing, so. Um, that's pretty much it. I also, if you want to talk about acoustic strings and mics, I use Martin Acoustics. These are cheap. They're like four bucks, five bucks. And the reason I go cheap on acoustics is because I don't play acoustic a lot. So if I'm tracking, if I have an idea for an acoustic part, I'll throw these guys on there to get a nice bright sound and I'll record it really quick. And then I probably won't touch the guitar for a while after that. So I don't like to spend a lot of money there because it just goes to waste. So this. Bass strings, basic, ba basic bass strings. I don't spend a lot of money there either. I actually haven't used this. I've actually been programming bass instead of tracking it because it sounds better, in my opinion. Also, don't forget the fast fret. I use this before I pick my guitar up, after I put my guitar down, it makes your strings last longer, sound better. It makes your playing smoother, like slides and all that fun stuff, it makes it a lot easier. So do that. As far as guitar picks go, people ask me that too. I actually use Iron Age accessories. They send me this, it's an LFS pick. If you can get a good shot of it there. But uh, super durable, super durable, sounds great. It has a thicker tone to it, but you can still uh, like dig into the strings and have a nice bright crunch to it as well. My favorite one out of the two has been this one. As you can see, I've worn the shit out of it. <laughs> but uh, because it has the two holes, and that's like really good grip, and it has overall really good tone, and it's more used to what I'm, it's the size of uh, pick that I'm used to. It's a little wider, but yeah, these sound really good. For recording vocals, I use a Shure SM7B microphone. Sounds great, works great. It's all you really need. And for acoustic guitar, I just use, it's a little more expensive, I think it was four or five hundred bucks, SM81, good for vocals, acoustic guitar, overheads, hi-hat, snare, stuff like that. So yeah, other than that guys, I really don't have a lot more to show you unless you want to go through my guitars, but I think we'll save that for another video. So hopefully this helps, hopefully this answers your questions. Um, be sure to subscribe to my page and comment, like, and check out my music. And check out Soul Sucker. With whichever hand it felt more pain when they were cuffing me. Fuck with me, I stay on that cocaine.